Yeah, I don't think pick up on Dyer's side. Yeah, but they, they've got... It's, it's just as much as a deny pick, I think. Leaving yeah, them, it's like, uh, for instance, giving them Earthshaker Shadow Fiend right now when they're on the Radiant side of things would have been way too much to overcome, I think. And look, people talk about Arteezy Shadow Fiend for good reason. He and Sumail certainly uh, both have, have sort of pioneered that oh, hero, bringing it back seconds. into the metagame. But don't forget, S4 was once one of the best Shadow Fiends in the Radiant world as well. So they have two incredibly Dyer. talented players. Yeah, and, and in terms of taking Dyer that away, of course, pick. Sumail just shining on that Shadow Fiend. Huge play earlier today and there we go clockwork now finally back in the game on the side of eg along with the dazzle i would say a fairly common opening yeah. for for the side of eg here yes you could argue for a mid hero like the shadow fiend but now it's it's obviously taken away and as well as you have bans on less shrug and queen of pain which would be a considered Ten other opening to pick. Well, i mean ppd and puppy also just absolutely incredible on hurry, the dazzle hurry. over the last couple of weeks Done this is a little that. unusual <laughs> i i raised my eyebrows a little bit at the ban of keeper of the light in the last draft but i mean secret valuing it incredibly highly taking it up in number two it was eg that showed us the farming dire keeper of the light in the summit three maybe team secret Only thinking something similar seconds. yeah well, has to be banned or taken yes, by eg yes. i think and then I also think uh, Bristleback has been shown a bit too much love uh, in yeah. this tournament. I think this might be the tournament that shows that Bristleback is slowly being faded Radiant out of the, the meta game as well. It's, I, I would be interested to see a stat on I its win rate in this tournament. I because like every game I watch, it feels like it's losing. I, I still feel like the, the, the problem with Bristleback is maybe teams have figured out how to play against him. Mm. But Ten also in, in what scenarios he gets gets into yeah. into play you have a mid match of bristol against my yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just, he brought that up it's and, just not that great they just sacked fear in that game they, they sacked fear mid and i think at one point uh viper was like ahead in cs like 48 to 16 yeah over the bristol but it, it was just a sack i mean they they got a lot for sumail top early on but yeah i mean fear never really got back in the game well it's also right. just not that good versus tusk because he locks you in with the frost shards and then you're forced to like run back into the enemy team and tusk. if you don't you're not really doing anything and we've seen this more rise in popularity in, in Razer, especially from these two teams. So another hero that True. There you sort go. of just completely nullifies the Brisbane. Yeah, uh, they still don't want to deal with that storm, though, of course. I mean, sure, you won the game, but uh, all right, we gave it up last game. Let's just make sure that we can get that win in game number three, along with the Clink ban, too, from the side of Secret. Yeah, I also like the Brood ban a lot by EG. Uh, we Ooh, haven't seen it in, in the recent past. Uh, but boy, the the Zai Broodmother just Five is, is absolutely hurry, terrified hurry. when he gets early room on the hero. It's two very good bans on the side of 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 Secret here for protection of Radiant the Keeper of the Light. Pink. You have Klinks as well as Storm that can right. just jump on uh, that it, it, on that fairly fragile hero. This is a Siren pickup, right? It must be. The, oh, I, oh no, banned. 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 Oh, second yeah. band. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. I like how uh, EG never loses sight of the Broodmother. I, I think a lot of teams just let that slip through like maybe once every six or seven games. Like, oh crap, we forgot to ban it in the second phase. But PBD is very vigilant about that and never forgets to ban it. To be fair, there, 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 there are not pick. a lot of even decent teams that would forget about the Brood against uh, against Secret. Five seconds. Hurry, hurry. Yeah, you know, I mean, but especially, I mean, we've seen that quite a few times that we saw uh, lots of heroes slipping Reserve through just time. because of how diverse the pool is right now for all teams. And so this is this is why this finals is so interesting for everyone. I mean, it's an absolute mind game, a real good insight into how these teams prepare, and of course how their drafters go about their thought process against each other. I I, I still do believe that Bristolbeck is fairly high on the on on both the the drafters' really? minds. I I think a call is a pretty decent counter to it, just because of the mana league. That you, what? that you can put on top to make of the Bristol. I actually this, uh, like this Bounty Hunter pick a lot. Uh, Connor and Shadowfin are both heroes that have a, a hard time dealing with him. Yeah. And you can get off oh, some... Oh, okay. Some okay. No, no, no. If they, yeah, yeah, yeah. To disrupt the jungle stacking on the dire side is what you're saying. Dead and they're easy, easy pickups. Okay. Right. I mean, I, that's kind of been the theme so far throughout, uh, throughout this tournament. It's like, all right, well, the early pressure, how's it going to come? Just make sure they can't roam about freely and just play a little safer in that oh, jungle. We talked about seconds. that in the drafting phase of game two also. And now with the Clink's gone, Bounty Hunter was still open. EG taking that to secure that part of their strategy. We saw in, in the Reserve season stage of the tournament that Bounty Hunter really wasn't very effective or, mm -hmm. and 
lost a lot more games than it won. But in this particular case, so far, I think it, it has a lot of potential in this game. No, I think it I, I think it nicely disrupts a lot of what Seeker are going to try to do with those first two heroes. The question on my mind right now is is what's the male's hero? Because you've got the Storm, the Leshrac, the Queen of Pain, and the Shadow Fiend all off the board. Uh, those are his four best heroes, probably. If they get a big enough uh, carry for fear, I think he could maybe even play a Zeus. I think Zeus has showed a lot of strength oh, yeah. in game two mm -hmm. in the hands of S4, and, and generally is a hero with a lot of firepower, especially yeah. early on. You can get some good kills with the Bounty Hunter, the Clockwork. I think a Juggernaut could be something on the side of EG to consider for fear, and then you can leave the fifth pick open to the mid for some mail. Yeah, the Zeus okay. is a good call. The uh, Sumail has, I think, two of the top three GPMs ever achieved on Radiant's Zeus. Radiant's turn to royally oh, yeah. screwed up. Rubik also slipping through with a couple of these other more situational bands in terms of the final specifically uh, coming through. It's not too surprising if you know Kuro and Poppy's history together. If you go back to TI3, I believe, I think this was the support combo they were looking to pick up in every game that they played, especially that aren't. when they then went up against the Lions in that famous final. Well, and, and also, it, despite, we talked about the Bounty Hunter mainly in the context oh, of mate, disrupting uh, what Team Secret's going to try to do in the dire jungle, but of course, you know, Rubik lets you Five turn that track advantage kind of on its head. Absolutely. So both teams now really playing Reserve a time. lot more spontaneously in terms of the draft here. Of course, already in the third game, tied 1-1 between Team Secret and Evil Geniuses. You can't just go head on with a preset plan. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back to what Sumil plays. There's been a lot of Lash Rack, a lot of Queen of Pain, a lot of Shadow Fiend. I think one hero that we haven't seen that we have seen recently is Tinker. Um, yeah. And it, you can definitely make use of the vision from Bounty Hunter, but I, he always plays a hero that scales really well into late. I had that on my mind from the very first pick. After I've seen the Shadow Fiend, I felt like it could be a, a pretty good good hero to pick up. It's just, in a one-on-one, -on -one, if Shadow Fiend is middle, Tinker crushes that hero on Rocket Laser Bird. Dire team are now picking. Now this this would be a signature hero for fear, for yeah. sure. I, I wonder, it, it's, it would seem a little odd to me that they would they would switch up Sumail so much, but I wonder, you've seen S4 have a lot of success with a mid Sven. I wonder if EG might be pulling a little bit of a wild card. The, the reason I mentioned Jugger earlier was because I was trying to look towards a dual lane that can you, you, it, they can kind of zone out an offlaner just seconds with the two heroes alone, and Sven is just the better in that case. I, I, did, I didn't think too much of it, but if you see Dazzle by Sven and Sven, Radiant these two heroes can zone out an offlaner quite easily. Okay, so you're still, you're still on board with the fierce Sven here in a duel lane with the I, I, yeah. I do think so. Okay. Yeah, right. I think that's right. It sounds good. Sven getting some love here in the finals, and Dark's here. It's picked up the last band. I agree with Bendo. Tinker is a very interesting pick here. I think uh, it could really, Ten really shine in this matchup. Do you think Secret maybe possibly thinks that far and tries to just ban it out and see what Five else seconds. EG has? Hurry. I mean, because we're racking our brains to see what he's going to pick, and then we finally came to the Tinker. I mean, as he used utility Reserve in both the Zeus and the, and the Tinker, I'd be surprised if it was in anything else than those two. Zeus? Mm. I, I don't think they have enough. I, I don't like the damage. I just feel like you, you would want to work around Either disable or more physical damage okay. on a, with, with a, death, a death together. All right, well, Only last man matter quite a bit, as we've seen, especially when you have these two teams together. Five seconds. It's really hurry, about kind of throwing hurry. each other off their game before the game even starts. I mean, as far as the playstyle goes, EG Dyer's has to bad. bring the fight to Secret. Like, Secret, they're going to be very content with farming passively, stacking up the jungle right. for Shadow Fiend, Keeper, and Darkseer. And I, I, I think Evil Genius just relies on kills a lot more with the Clockwork, with the Bounty Hunter. So I think something aggressive as suits Sumail's playstyle. What about right. Lina? Wait. Lina's also good. Bring back Lina. Okay. Even well, what do you think I was even considering, what do you think of Puck here? I've seen him play Puck Reserve a time. decent amount, but the problem with Puck is he tends to fall off, Radiant I would say, like 30, 35 minutes after the Blink Yules pick up. Uh, and it, it's, it's it's good if you can keep getting kills. There we go. Uh, there there we go. The Tinker's left open. Tinker gets picked up by EG. Crowd roaring. And I, I mean, the numbers that Sumail put up uh, on Tinker at DAC were, were just sick. I mean, he had some of the highest damage numbers per minute ever achieved in the game on any hero playing Tinker. Uh, I mean, he gets going on this hero, and I mean, you think his storm is exciting. What do you see? <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah. can tell you, with a, especially with a bounty under, Only Secret needs seconds. to protect middle. If, if oh, Shadow yeah. is middle on the side of Dire, it, it, Five it's seconds very, remain. very difficult well, but for Shadow to But the only on one that can really do that is Kuroki, right, on the Rubik. 
He, he can time. kind of babysit him, but yeah. I also feel like he has to. Yeah, yeah exactly. But Keeper of the right. Light can't really do anything, and Darkseid is obviously the offlane hero. But at the same time, when you when you have a bounty roam, and Ruby needs to sit somewhere, and usually he tends to stack at the same time, a bounty hunter that is next to sitting next to a Ruby, a bounty hunter doesn't care. He just hits him down. Yeah, yeah there's plenty of openings. I think uh, the lineup so far from Evil Genius is part of the last pick of Team Secret. Really favors EG. But this is where I actually really go back to the fact that you, you can now easily sli slide the SF back over into the safe lane and pick up a more uh, a more self-sufficient mid here. Maybe. I mean, True. we've seen that work for both of these teams I mean, quite a could, bit. You actually, could pick an, an S4 puck. An S4 puck. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly right. I think it's that's still really point, tough though. with Bounty Hunter versus Tinker. Like, Tinker doesn't lose that many one-on-one -on -one matches, maybe to, like, Viper or something like that. But I'm not sure if they want to swing that route. Right. And Razor, then? That does Viper's banned out. Yeah, I mean, oh, Viper's right. banned so out. So that explains a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's why that Viper was banned out by EG. And so... Not I disagree. I also think the problem with putting a... Putting a SF... All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, after much contemplation, we're going to see that anti-mage come back out for Team Secret. Another interesting draft phase, another excellent game coming up. Game number three between EG and Team Secret in the grand finals. We're tied 1-1. Let's find out who takes the lead again as we throw over to our casters for game number three. Thank you very much. Yes, it is time for game number three. Team Secret versus Evil Geniuses. I hope you're prepared. Uh, I know I'm chilling myself out right now. I'm, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit scared here. Evil Geniuses, so I like the fact that um, the analysts on the desk early on, they brought up the fact that um, they kind of seemed like an agreement among all of them, that they felt like Evil Geniuses need to slightly outdraft to Team Secret Five. in order to take Eight. a win. And I, and I feel I like going into this finals, Five that was the way I was looking remain. at it too. Can PPD essentially outdraft Team Secret in order to provide Evil Geniuses a win because I feel like team right now Team Secret are just operating slightly better than EG in game. I'm looking at this draft and I like the Tinker Prepare last yourself. pick. It was We're definitely anyway. interesting and probably surprised Team Secret, but still, Team Secret have this nice all-around draft that you're going to see a lot. I mean, very natural pickups through and through. S4 Shadow Fiend, you've got a Universe Darks here, and even the Animage RTZ knows this hero, obviously, through and through everyone does. And it's going to be a pretty hard counter, potentially, to the Tinker. <laughs> <laughs> And the trash talk begins between the teams. You wouldn't expect anything less than RTZ facing up his former team. <laughs> There's already a little bit of, uh, of uh, tit and tat going back and forth between inside the lobby, but it really is father versus son, fear versus RTZ in so many different ways. And, uh, well, Zai, maybe not exactly where he wants to be. As, uh, he's down here on the bottom lane, being stalked up, and uh, there's your attack from Alwi. Just to slow him down with the Orb of Venom, but they won't get in range for Fear to get the Storm Bolt off in time, so there is no real follow-up to this. But let's have a bit of a peek through our lanes. So it will be an off-lane Universe Clockwork, as you said. It couldn't be any more comfortable for him. Artiz, he already had a really great performance with his Anti-Major earlier. He'll be taking that roll into the safe lane and being babysat by Koro, who is that roll as Rubik. And that puts S4 into towards the mid lane up against Sumail's Tinker. Uh, we'll have a roaming alley bounty hunter. And then the, capping off the EG lineup, PPD on his ever so saving Dazzle and Fear in his signature role the as Ven up against the offlane Zai Darkseer. Uh, puts Puppy on the Keeper of the Light and S4 is the final hero. And that will be middle lane as the Nevermore or Shadow Fiend. Sorry, so I went through Warcraft. Early on, take a look at what the universe it does. He managed to get the perfect positioning in order to get the Cogs block off into this small little area with two different creeps. Uh, that's pretty much perfect timing there from Universe. You can't really get much more than that with an off-lane clockwork on Radiant side. He does it beautifully and the lane will die. Into it. Trouble. Bottom lane, the Storm Bolt's gonna come in. They're trying to get around him for the heal bomb and there it is. Oh, in trouble. Wow. And first blood spilt by first evil blood. geniuses. That's what they tried to do previously when he was just walking down the lane. Never underestimate the power or damage of heal. Yeah, and this is something that, while well, I was mentioning earlier, that the Tinker may be countered out by the anime job. He's a heavy intelligence, high mana pool hero who can be potentially blown up by that anime mana void. The spin could have a very good game this time around. Fear last time was kind of just completely trashed when it came to, like, laning up against a Viper. That was just a laning phase decision that they decided to basically make him the three position. And because of that, he didn't manage to have that much of an impact. Universe top lane picked up, thrown back, 
Latizzi's done all the hard work. Curry doesn't have an extra level, but with a range attack, that'll be enough. Nice. Latizzi blinks forward. And revenge built by Secret Wallace for a middle lane. Laser and Rocket Bill coming in from the Tinker. Honey's gonna have a grin on his face after watching this. And after that, you've got AUI immediately being able to counter the counter that was placed down. Now Team Secret are very exposed in that middle lane, and Puppy may just have to throw down another counter where sure enough they're gonna go for it. It's already taken out instantly, using the Tangos to eat away that one. But still, S4 feeling that pressure, and now they're going to go in. Another Tango eat of the counter ward. Puppy's going to be forced into buying more, but he doesn't have the gold for it. No, he does not. But at least they can control the runes for the moment. As the top one will be taken out by the Rubik, but the double damage goes into a Dark Seer. That's not really going to help him much at all. Uh, and on the middle lane, S4, it's just a horrendous lane for him when you think about it. You get lasered down, it's a, it's a level 2 laser, so you hear a blind duration is down to 3.5, but you have this blind which your max is 4.5 seconds. The Shadow Fiend cannot attack the last uh, a, a unit. He has to use his razors, but then some mail laser rockets again. Level 2, the damage is there. there. It's a simple chip, and all he needs is just that little bit of assistance to come in from the Bounty Hunter, and that means Owie's also leeching up the levels when this happens. Yeah, and with the Tinker rapidly getting ahead in experience over this SF, his nukes are just going to overwhelm SF's HP pool every single time he comes down to lane. Now, the SF still has plenty of opportunities. He's one of the most known mids to be able to make a comeback after a heavy amount of ganks, uh, purely because his farming speed is insane with those uh, three different races available to him. The problem is, he still doesn't have, he needs to get level three shots raise before he's independent of his physical right clicks uh, right now he still needs to actually right click to get cs and this is where the laser is going to hurt him quite heavily he does have one upside though and that's the fact that the dark seal zai doesn't have to come off the off lane if zai was having a really hard time he'd probably be looking to take a lot of the stacks like puppy's already worked himself up a triple stack oh, inside the dark jungle oh hello bottom lane but fear can't get to him in time he did pop the war cry but it wasn't enough uh but yeah you don't have to actually try and contest like fight over your own jungle for the stack so if S4, if they feel like he needs it, they'll just send him up there to take it. But Owie, he's on the hunt. He'll be watching this very closely. So Puppy's going to be careful as he th throws out the Illumina. At least he hits Owie on the way through. Doesn't get a single last hit. So Owie doesn't leech anything, but he does at least ping out the triple stack. And now, in fact, he's going to take out oh, quite a large chunk of experience. But yeah, he was sitting on the tip of it. So he does take the damage. Yeah, if AUI actually wasn't hurt, hit by that first Illuminate Blast, he probably would have gone for the attempted go on the Keeper Blight. Even if he couldn't kill him, he'd actually at least force him back to Fountain. Owie. Well, that sentry was down for the Dire side. Kuro's right next to him, but obviously he's got no idea that Owie is standing next to him. And the PPD, PPD even rotates him with, so there's three heroes now arriving in for EG up and, against S4. And with the Bounty Hunter potentially being able to start out right next to an ally, they can actually get a double nuke there. The right click, the shuriken, as well as a shadow wave heal. Could be a decent amount of burst damage, but they decide against it. He just heals up AY a little bit, and he will go back to roaming into the Keeper of Light's jungle. Now, notice because of the fact that they're actually rotating the Rubik around quite a bit, and they also have a Keeper of the Light who's focusing more on jungling than anything else, yes, our Darkseer isn't getting much, uh, or he's getting a lot of experience in that bottom lane, but so is Universe. Yeah. And the Darkseer with levels, we saw, well, sorry, uh, Zai having a great old time, Universe with the Clockwork, yeah, they're both four and four. And both of these heroes, like, it's, it's a little bit more essential than the Darkseer yeah, finds more levels, and, uh, yep, he's pretty low, but oh. S4! He actually hit the raise from that range, while on top lane, not easy, trying to survive against the battery assault, unable to do so. So it is a call for a core trade-off. I mean, I think that's almost worth it. Losing the Tinker is a huge loss, but then being able to get an Animage kill so early on to this game is huge for evil geniuses. I can't believe they found that opening. S4 obviously very happy with the amount of experience they picked up from that kill. We'll now jump into that level 6 and we'll start snowballing with that farm, whether he's able to utilize the lane that much or if he feels enough pressure, obviously, go into the jungle and farm that one up. Puppy may just have, both Puppy as well as Universe may just have to give that up because S4 is the highest priority farm right now behind RTZ. Yeah, they need, they need him to be strong. And, well, he's probably not even going to get the six-minute rune on bottom. He's on top of Aoi, but who's going to get the rune? And it actually goes to the Shadow Fiend, but Aoi starts his attack. Raise number one, raise number two. Sentry oh, was down. Up. He can see him perfectly. Just raise number three. Does the work at S4. Punishing Aoi on that Bounty Hunter. 
very greedy play from A.Y. and he gets punished quite heavily for it. Now, the S4 Shadow Fiend is getting pretty out of control now. It's going to be up to Universe as the next one to step up the bat. Bounty Hunter provided pressure for the first five minutes, but he can't really do much now. Now he needs to actually try and get his level six in order to, to start utilizing that track goal to help evil geniuses get ahead in kills. And it's going to be Universe, once he gets that hook shot, who's going to be able to put pressure on S4 instead. <laughs> Again, the counter of the Sentry Ward in mid. The battle for the Invis Vision is real. But obviously, you can always just come in and get rid of it if you know where it is. Uh, Puppy still farming up. Just playing around with the mud golems for now. And now he, in fact, leaves an observer ward behind. In fact, Puppy throws down one of his sentry wards. So we can see when Aoi comes in range. Now, Aoi is running the edge of the vision. And he moves over. Universe does not have hookshot. In fact, he has one creep away from having hookshot. But he gets in range. The battery is not over on Puppy with the rocket and the extra attack. They will find the damage. But Arteezy, no, he's not going in any deeper. Universe will bottle up. And back it up. There's no way RTZ can find a kill there. Note, note also that uh, Clockwork did go for the maxed out battery assault build. Sometimes you see a second level in Rocket Flare just to help ensure easy CS. But he's facing an anti-mage. He's low on mana anyway, so he wants to max out the kill potential, particularly against such a high value target like the SF. It's probably the only way you can get an advantage back inside the lane, finding pickoffs like this. Owie stalking S4. Obviously with the Observer Ward, he's already got the extra information. And S4 might be watching himself very closely too to see this experience tick. Because when it does happen, you can work it out. Bottom lane, telling you to pick up. Fear being dragged back. Gets a stun on Zai, but that's not going to save his life. Support from PPD. He was just a little bit too far away. I don't know if he's going up to actually look for the eight minute room, but Secret found the perfect gap in EG's defense. Yeah, that's the nighttime advantage of Oh, hook shot. Oh, no. Actually missed it. They started the duel from a high ground to low ground, but Universe with a haste He's running up to S4 with a battery assault, and then with a double TP and says, This isn't a great idea. Then realized, wait, no, it's Zai who came in. Cora, the second one, he overseas welcome with a telekin to pick up. All he wants to do is force S4 back behind that tier one tower where AY will be able to strike with that level three shuriken. Top could get it now, but it would die. baby sitting in so close. Yeah. And the bottles just arrived too, so he's not going to find the damage required to get the kill. And meanwhile, Arteezy almost finished that tier one tower on top lane. Universe will come in. And Arteezy, well, he's got the choice to contest for it. The fortification will be there, stopping the catapult from getting the last hit. And there goes that tier one tower being denied. Arteezy says it's just not worth his farm. Because he's also trying to stay on time for that battle fury as the anti mage. It's the whole goal of him. He's meant to be bigger than the Tinker ever will be. Yeah, you're hoping to look at maybe a 15-minute Battle Fury as kind of average timing after your treads. And RTZ is definitely on mark for that one. It's a really nice pickup from Koro. He just stole level 1 Shadow Walk. Obviously not great as level 1, but it'll give him the ability to try and find someone inside the Radiant Jungle, and that can set up for a gank with Puppy and Zai. And in fact, they're actually going to bring an extra help. S4 is moving down, and this is not visible by any Radiant Ward. And in fact, if Kuro walks around the corner now, he'll probably scout at Universe. There's a lot of support coming down to die. Hulk shot in. Puppy is going to start the Illuminate. Already use it. In fact, it's on cooldown. He's clearing the guard strength. The cogs are up, and with the balls, they'll kill the monster. He's going to raise number one. The Illuminate the ball. Perfect time in Universe. Still alive. The six times for that, but the attack from S4 will hit its mark. The tracks are up from Aoi. They're chasing after Kuro. Not to mention the rest of them, and Kuro turns around, he actually stole Stormbolt, put down the Sentry Ward, hoping that Aoi would continue the chase, but he does not do so. The Stormhammer steal there from Kuro is what won that Radiant's fight, being able to throw it out onto the Sven, it also hits the Clockwork at the same time, gave them that extra kill that wins the fight. As it is, once again, both of these teams rotating around quite early on just because of the draft and maybe just because of the meta we're seeing in this current tournament. But so much of that 10 to 20 minute marker is very important to try and win. So we're seeing a lot of rotations. Not many heroes are actually just AFK farming as we would see maybe in just so much as two months ago. The only one who's really doing that would be Arteezy. And obviously, that's just the job of an anime just to try and get that battle for you as quick as possible. Yeah, but the difference is between like, like what you're talking about, game number one and game number two, we saw all the rotations, but there weren't that many engagements. It was always just holding back until there was probably one of the big fights, but there's a lot more kill potential with the heroes in this game.
Hence, we have 12 kills within the space of 11 minutes. So we've actually had more death and destruction within the first, well, 11 minutes of this game than we probably have if you combine up both game number one and game number two. But the trade-off is buildings are still alive. We're 11 minutes in and only one tier one tower has dropped. Universe moving forward. S4, he sees him. The dust will trigger. Zai expecting that Aoi was on top of him, but it's not the case. They leave an Observer Ward behind. Meanwhile, Kuro is having some fun with BPD on the bottom lane. The double TPs are coming in, and Kuro has got to be careful. That's the man with BTs up. Lays up with a Storm Bolt. He'll get it off with a Telekinesis, but Kuro knew he was dead. Uh, similarly, he probably should be there for the Illumina to hit. Meanwhile, Air S4 goes for the Requiem Falls. Back back in the wall. Owie's low. Mana Void from Arteezy. Finds a kill, and Fear so low. Arteezy blinks one second away, but the heal will be keeping him alive. That's Fear running away. The Dazzle Weave was also having an effect, so it's high armor to get through. Clockwork, Universe. He was having a, a look at Arteezy, but didn't want to go any further. Yeah, I love the fact that Arteezy was actually willing to make that rotation, because at this point, you want to make sure that evil geniuses do not find too many pickoffs and don't go unpunished for trying to go for the, those early track gold kills. So I love the fact he was willing to actually rotate around, despite the fact that he hasn't actually finished up the battlefield just yet. Counter warding wars being placed for Universe and Snatch Puppy. Yeah, they pick him up, throw him out, that gets him out of the cards, but Puppy still being pushed out and then heal bombed. Is the universe who does find the kill, and that's going to help him get that blade and up very, very quickly. Dyer's and while all this is going on, Samael's already picked up his BT, Soul Ring, Bottle, Null Talisman, everything a good Tinker needs, but he's also got Dyer's 1900 gold. This attack. Blink Dagger's going to start to come up, and as far as chasing a very high maneuverable Tinker, Secret don't really have great abilities for this. Because what are you going to get? You got you got Blink Anti Mage. He's not going to be able to chase the Tinker when he can, can rearm his own Blink Dagger. And the Surges, Illuminus, Blinding Light. Like there's a couple of things here and there, but nothing really changes over ch chases over a distance. Yeah, the Blinding Light later on to the game will definitely be a very critical factor. Um, but the same problems when it comes to uh, catching out the the Tinker on the side of Team Secret also happens with EG in trying to catch out Arteezy's Anti Mage. Right? They actually do not have that much lockdown. Clockwork is in particular particularly strong there. It's namely just the Sven Stormhammer. That's your longest duration stun to control that enemy. So Fear really needs to, to get ahead in farm and he's already felt a lot of pressure that has kept his net worth right around the middle of these 10 players. Which is not where he wants to be. He wants to have that Mask of Madness, go into the BKB, be a huge warrior during the fights. But he's not getting it at the moment. Dire Observer brought down by Koro. The amount of wards that have been killed off during this game is unbelievable. Uh, he de wards out EG's ward, which is looking on the other side of the, of the tree line, so that understand who is attacking and how many of them are attacking into that tier 1 tower on bot. And they realize, okay, we have no vision. They probably have it themselves. We're not going to find a kill on bot lane. So instead, rotate up. Maybe find a kill on S4, but it's exactly at the same time as he moves into his jungle. Everyone goes missing, and Secret just hold defensively. Yeah, I said early on that Fear could have a really good game as Radiant this Sven, because I feel like this Sven is a pretty good carry Radiant versus both the SF as Radiant well as the Animage. You've got yourself at least a disabled. Yeah, where he is. As well as right on top of him. Now they start with a weave, but already the recall is coming, and the hook's running from Universe. They can't pull him in time. As well, they've clogged up, pulled down, and brought down. 36 seconds on the sideline. But the trade-off will be the tier one tower on bottom lane. Well, I'd say that if the Creek Wave could survive through the March of the Machines of Simail. And maybe even Arteezy. Yep, there's your blink dagger up from Simail. Arteezy in the trees. Just trying to stay hidden for the moment. He got a 13-minute battle fury. He's already starting into the same build he did previously, and that's the Vladimir's offering. Yeah, look what Arteezy is doing. He's using the battle fury, which does have that active now to be able to eat through trees. If he actually finds somehow the Tinker, he can control him and easily take him out. Trail. Oh, okay. I was about to say track kill, but Aoi didn't go in with a Shuri toss as well. So Fear didn't have time to get in range for the Storm Bolt. It looks like that's what he was committing to after triggering the war cry. And they still take the tier one tower, EG. 9 to 7, there's not much in this, under 2,000 gold, as well as experience the difference between the teams. S4 saw the TP down the bottom lane, he's just trying to force it, take out the free wave, feed into the tower, but the rocket spam as well, taking damage from the tower is not a healthy way for S4 to do this push, and in fact now with a clockwork rocket coming in, Universe, his hook shot's out of range, you can't reach anyone from secret, 
and the observed ones also watching most of the movement from EG. Note that the mo more popular build of SS nowadays, which is Mech BKB, is actually being surpassed here Radio's from S4 with Yule Scepter. Yule Scepter does a, a couple of different things for you. First of all, Yule Scepter will help a little bit to deal with the clockwork blade mail that has been picked up. Obviously, Mech and, and, blade, uh, Mech and BKB attacked. would do that too. I think the most notable factor, though, is going to be picking off the Tinker. This actually allows the SF to potentially solo out this Tinker multiple times. He gets a Blink Dagger, catches a Mules. Obviously, the Shadow Requiem is going to do most of the damage on Tinker. It pretty much eliminates him right there. That could be a really good way for them to hunt him down. SF on one side, Animage on the other, and just look for that opening on the Tinker, who you know is going to be split-pushing these lanes. <laughs> I want to watch Puppy too. You talk about Tinker also split pushing. When does this Aghanims arrive? 1,200 goals on Puppy. Do you just try and rush for the Aghanims in this game? Or do you think, okay, I need to go utility items. I need a four stop up against someone like a Clockwork. Um, I don't think a four stop would be bad for being able to save your allies. I, oh, I would actually... Wow! Oh. Okay. Oh. That was a little bit off. Misses the hook shot and then gives the hook shot over to Koro. Yeah, you can't afford to make those kind of errors just because the, the track hold obviously makes that kill worth attacked. so much more. And then on top of that, we're talking about the potential agonims or what have you for the Keeper of the Light. Shutting well, down his farm is not the most paramount thing for evil geniuses. Koro is still tracked up on the back lines and S4 moves forward. Well, he sees the EG Koro moving forward. And he has to up. Maybe he can kill off Koro with one swipe, two. Okay, well, that'll do it. With the rocket also helping out. S4 is on the run, but Fear moving so quickly back behind that tier two tower. Stormbolt and two in four seconds time. A little bit too far away for the rocket still coming. S4 and the regeneration. Oh, to go down the Now he's in trouble with a Stormbolt connecting on both. They've got the movement speed because of the track. A still true for one and RTZ joined the fight. The back into a three man ball and the illusion. Alien 18 HP, the illusion from Darkseid will get the kill. Shamail try and dodge as much as he possibly can around the tree lines. The surge is up, he's being out between the trees and oh he's no. Arteezy finding the mark, finding another kill, going three for one on this end mage. This that is, was this all side though. That could have been such a better engagement if RTZ had actually used his own there. Off. He's going for Universe, burning off the mana, taking a lot of damage as well to do it because the Blade Marble blinks up. Looking to chase, but doesn't want to go too far. Dazzle is right behind him. So essentially, Zai came in and hit that three-man vacuum. That was an excellent opportunity. He was trying to set up RTZ for a mana void. If he'd actually mana voided all three of them with putting it on, I think the Tinker probably had about half mana. It would have done a sizable amount of damage, killing two probably almost instantly. And then they could have chased down the Sven as well. Still, though, an excellent fight for Team Secret as evil geniuses just simply get a little bit too overly aggressive, trying to use that movement speed advantage of the track to chase down multiple heroes while they're deep into the Tier 2 tower area. Man, they can get really punished for this too because with this kill with, well, with the multiple kills Arteezy now has a plate of alacrity this Yash is going to be coming up a lot quicker in fact he does pick up the band of Elskin and almost has enough money to finish the full Yash up but Keeper of the Light is having all the space in the world to farm up in the jungle he's got 1200 gold after picking up the point booster and even Koro He's still walking around with arcane boots. He stole Shadow Wave from PPD and doesn't even really need a Blink Dagger. Even the way he stole that Shadow Wave, Zai surges him in so he can get in range to get the steal. You keep the creep waves up, you keep your teammates alive, and you have many options as far as Secret's initiation goes. But initiation just got better for EG. A Blink Dagger is now in this vent, and they instantly move into a smoke with PPD. Yeah, pretty much a necessity if you want to be able to lock down this Animage a bit better. So the Blink in the preemptive God Strength if they're trying oh, to take the Animage. Smoke, animates. where's the dust? S4. Oh. The smoke broke, he triggers the dust, but Owie ran up the river. They saw him because the Dire Observer Ward actually saw him redo the Ghost Walk in the river, but they have no detection. Actually, yes, they do. The Sensing Wall from Kuro, pick him up, throw him down. Ooh. Kuro will take the kill very quickly. That was the fate ball, uh, the, the Shadow Wave going to work. That was an amazing Houdini maneuver from AUI, who simply disappeared from those mass nukes from Secret. And now they're going to utilize this position to try and do Roshan, though I don't think this is a play they can make. It's just a bit too Dyer's risky to throw that one into the game. Yeah, with the hook shots and the ability just for March of the Machines to lock you inside the pit, it's too dangerous. So they just back it up. 
And they don't have, they don't have to take the risk. Remember, Artizi is now level 16 and a half. He is just ripping through this lineup. Well, there's your hook shot going on the middle lane. It's Universe. He's in there with Zion Kuro with the heal. That's doing some nice return damage. Talent needs to drag back and Sun into fear. Even Stormbolt being stolen. Hitting in to that poor Sven who cannot keep up. And Zai on 93 life running back in. Maybe he can survive. The track is on him. Okay, he will not survive. Down for the count. The Rockets are also scouting out Pompey, but no hook should available. Fear triggers the wall cry. They want to dive underneath the tier two tower. Universe can tank quite a hefty amount. Goes for the Illuminum. Any kind of damage he can do. And it's for lining up the Requiem with Souls. Not really in range, but then again with the raids under Fear. Universe is still in the trees. Fear one the attack will get the oh. killing blink forward. The Kuro is waiting for him. Gets a sudden alley. And as she steals Shuri Toss. Well, he already threw it. I mean, doesn't matter for it. So Arteezy can't find any opening. In fact, Aoi kind of hopes that Clockwork can find a rocket to help him out, but that's from one side of the map to the other. Won't work. End of the engagement. But there it is. Still Vlad's Battle Fury. Yasha, soon to be the Manta style, picked up from Arteezy. I simply feel like um, the rest of Evil Geniuses didn't manage to take enough of a lead to be able to shut down this animation entirely. So now they have to kind of play for late game. They can get some small skirmishes through and through. Arteezy. Universe having a crack at a battery assault. Nice cold pushback. There's still mana though. For a quick blink away and then TP as well. They're really hoping that Anime would shoot blink over the river into the hands of AUI, unfortunately. And Teddy blinked into the Roshan pit and TP'd out. Smart play from Arteezy. Well, for now, Arteezy still very happy with his position. Stays alive, doesn't delay the mana style of his. But now he is finding a lot of openings. They're just not being able to capitalize really on it. And PPD can't really help him out either. This guy's got a magic wand as well as our neighbors in saying that. Okay, there's the rest of his island. I'm like, wait, I'm sure he owns more than what he's got. Uh, and that's why the cloak arrives in with the extra consumables. But he's level 11 on this dazzle. You know, I was going to talk about some mail and his item choices here. Uh, early on, I was going to ask whether he needs to go for a scythe of ice in order to control that animage, or can he go for a little bit of burst damage first? It all kind of depends on how far ahead your tinker is early on. He went for the Dagon, but he's not going to finish it up and try and go for Dagon 5. It's unnecessary. Instead, now I believe he's going back for the scythe of ice in order to try and control AM. Well, if he can do it, but at the same time, then he has to jump and instantly get that Hexel before Arteezy was able to work his way into a BKB. Because that might be his, well, it will be his later game kind of approach to have that long duration BKB, Manda for now. In fact, Arteezy's just having a great old time. We, we, I, we have seen this before. He moves all through the Radiant Jungle, takes as much of their farm as possible, skips out every single creep wave he possibly can. And, uh, well, there's your blink away. Still gonna have that miss chance on him. He's just a pop behind. It's not even there. Hook shot in. Can he hold him back here? That's pretty clear. Cool. And yes, he pulls himself away. With the very this shot. And Zion sacrifices himself for the greater anti-mage, who gets recalled back out to Puppy. That is a worthy sacrifice. That was just a half a second between Arteezy being able to get away from that storm hammer and it actually landing and him blowing up and that would have been a critical pickoff. Them shutting down his net worth, that actually would have then jumped the tinker ahead in the net worth board. So now he's doing an excellent job keeping up with Arteezy. He can't obviously jungle nearly as efficiently, but he's still keeping the side lanes pushed hard enough that he is getting the necessary late game items to counter this animage. Team Secret are going to reach a certain critical tipping point where Using the Animage as a sort of five or six slotted carry, they kind of have to go all in and try and finish the game before the Tinker gets too big. But Tinker is rapidly putting a timer on Team Secret, I feel, with the amount of net worth he's picking up. So I'm wondering just how long that time is going to go. The split push is not bad, but getting into the high ground of Secret is not easy. And while Secret have been able to hold on to quite a fair amount of towers, they're finding more pickoff potential. Like S4 blinks himself away from that little bottom secret shot, and they recall in. They want to try and fight this one. Where's your search? Kuro has it. But he cannot get close enough to find an opening. They put down sentry wards, hoping they find the bounty hunter there. But it's just not to be the case. S4, who just picked up the blink tail from the side jump shot. In. Ah, it's easy. Nope. I thought he might have a little bit of control and uh, go for the mana style burn off into the mana void, but universe is fine. Triggers the blade bell is very, very happy with life. Now the utility of the force staff available for the universe as well. 
if you can actually get it. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but there is a certain four staff plays you can make against really mobile blinking heroes like the Animage. Essentially, you hook shot, you try and wrap yourself around to the front side of the Animage. Cog push him backwards and then offensively four staff him to push him into the cog He's coming for TPD. The Iron Shell's over on Artesia. The burn's gonna be real and dazzle. Well, he'll just run himself away to save. There's more support, more shot missed from Universe again. Zai surged up. Animage is still in the neighborhood, has those mana star illusions, which you'll now trigger. Start burning off the mana there of Universe. And again, EG, you're forced to fall back. As just two heroes moving around while S4 is in the jungle farming, and Puppy is also getting closer and closer towards this Aghanim Peptacoddle. And that's also going to help out during daytime. See if you can find the Tinker while he's in the trees. Fia, you all step the rock, Puppy, bring in help, and it's going to be Kuro, and Fia, you're dead. The first real big pickoff of the S4, Blink Dagger and Yule Scepter going into work. And this will allow them to probably take down this Tier 1 tower. Tinker is excellent at being able to defend Tier 1s early on, but with a pickoff like their Sven going down, it just seems unlikely they're going to be able to hold. Dyer's bottom tower or maybe not. Fire. Team Secret actually take the opportunity to just spread out and farm. You see the Ancients cleared through by S4 already. Arteezy cutting that top Dyer's wave as well, which is trying to keep up as much map pressure on EG as possible. And how long is it going to be before Sven can 100% hit in to the Anti-Mage? He's just picked up the tower of evasion he does not have to finish the full butterfly is just having that evasion while Sven doesn't even have a bkb they jump down after owie they've lost vision Dyer's however and the dire sentry ward just fire. timed out so artesi can't finish the job all he needed was like three more four more seconds on that ward and there it is the agonims from the keeper of the light this is going to be insanely hard to deal with the split push play and counterplay between the tinker and then the keeper of the light and the any mage they're going to be all over the map but there's that scythe of ice so now tinker actually has some catching mechanisms whereas before it was just the any mage and the s4 with the yule scepter that could have caught the tinker now he's actually able to be offensive onto these heroes right. any mage really needs to find that bkb if they can keep him Hex all the time and just pop off the ma the magical damage, then Artis is in a hell of a lot of trouble. Well, remember that Hex no longer removes, it no longer applies that break mechanic, right? So he's True. actually able to still keep the evasion. So going straight for the butterfly will still increase his survivability, but there is a certain amount of danger, right? Just because you're dodging hits when you're Scythe Vice, yep. you still have to think about the fact that he's going to be rearming in you and perma-disabling you. Um, he could do that, and then you can add in Sven. And Sven doesn't have any kind of, like, immunity himself, but if, if Tika can keep the, con the control up, he can dish out the damage required. Uh, looks like Secret again, they're gonna come in for Roche. As, uh, yep, they're just recalling him in. And that's gonna be RTZ brought back to the engagement. And EG, at least they're all alive this time around. But they're not really in position for it. Fear's too far away, and Roshan's dying too quickly. So this will be the Aegis the Immortal. And they really haven't given anything up for it. I mean, a little bit of push at top lane, but under us, quickly dealt. Hook shot, that range is too far away. He's not going to make it. They just give up. There's no way they go for that fight. I mean, that would be a complete suicide play to try and basically steal Aegis and then instantly die again. Universe decides against that. Instead, they're going to try and push pressure up on the top lane where they're expecting a TP to defend. Or maybe they can find themselves the pick off. But here's the thing, Arteezy doesn't care about the top lane. Instead, he just goes straight for the tier 1 tower in middle. He says, you want that tier 1, you can have it. I'm going to trade your middle tier 1 tower, which is better for me anyway. Yeah, she blinked down to try and attack into Universe. There's an observer looking up, and now Anime takes a large amount of damage. Where that extra control? Look at that. Right to the sun, the cops push back. Laser, no mana for a day gone. And Arteezy, mana style, blinks himself away. This is the point for Tinker, who gets such an early day gone in sight but doesn't have a mana pull to support it. That was such good timing there from the Universe. Throwing out the hook shot at the last half second of the Scythe device in order to make sure that there was another Scythe device follow-up from Samael. Unfortunately, again, as you said, they just didn't have the mana to throw out all the next round of nukes to finish him off. If I only had Carl, we could have given mana. But for now, the Keeper of the Lies working against him and pushing into the Tier 2 tower on bottom lane with the Animage. Um, it's highly unlikely that EG can try and defend this. Even if they do get vision, they're out of position. You have an Animage on the front lines. You've actually got Greaves as well. And that's coming in from the Darks here, and the tower's gone. Artis does too much damage, and Nagus the Immortal up his sleeve. And with 3,200 gold, actually, he's finished the full Butterfly. He actually finished the full Butterfly. 
Doesn't have extra money for it, but he doesn't care. He's got the Agassi model, so immortality is still his. Yeah, he's sitting at 668 gold per minute. The sixth slot in Anime Mage is going to come in. I mean, he's actually already got the Aegis. He can't afford to get another on him, so it might be secret. May just try and utilize this Aegis to take maybe a couple more of those two, Tier 2 towers and hopefully limit the Tinker's mobility a bit more. What do you think about Tinker actually buying up the level 2 booze of travel before going in for, well, anything else? I'm completely fine with it because you know you're going to be seeing a lot of fights and you don't have any of those towers up. Creeps are maybe perhaps a, a bit unreliable to go to, so uh, I am a big fan of the Boots of Travel level 2 early on the Tinker, simply because this allows you to be a lot more effective in early skirmishes. I suppose it will also help out when you get a Bounty Hunter, you don't go, just go directly to him. Or even the clockwork who's walking around with an invis room but can't find any of secret. Because they're mostly on top. With this dire observer ward, they're still sitting on the cliff. Actually, I say that, it now times out. Uh, they had really good vision to go into this tower. So it has to be redone by Puppy, who's coming down now. And in fact, he's recalling in the troops. The Radiant Tower, they should jump in from his floor. Great room, and they want to pull off here. Deep and down to it, enough to kill him. Well, it looks like it will be. Fear down for the count. The man on the tree lines by. Also, over the TNC. Just pops the bounty as well as the Tinker and goes for more. The Cogs from Universe will keep him out. But the damage has already been done to both the Tier 2 Tower as well as the heroes of EG. Yeah, they were on the game inside the fight, constant control against the Animage is a counter to him in a way, but in this part of the game, Animage just drops Tinker every single time. Once he starts throwing out some of that mana, a big man void will almost instantly kill him. And now the tier 3 tower almost got no fortification available for evil geniuses. They buy the Cobra on this vent. They want to try and hold Universe again with a cop push on the enemy. But he's still holds the Aegis. He wants to core pick him up and Gaia! Back up in with the storm ball flying and back and back up. He'll still end up dying, but for what cost? We've actually lost fear for 70 seconds. Artesia's ran the base, jumped in for the double kill on the dazzle. They will finish up the melee ranks. The only lane they could go to is bottom because this tier 2 tower still survives in the mid and back. Backdoor regen will protect it, but they're going to push it anyway. They feel so comfortable that they just leave S4 to that top lane to finish off that last rags. They're even running through the tier two, which they should take the same turn this play here. He jumps in, but RPG's already there. S4 moving the front lines once again. The Hulk pushing him back here by three positioning. And the oh. mail as well as Owie. Two on the sideline again. It's a double double man. What is Once again here on the ESL on Frankfurt stage, Secret one win away from success. Again, Secret just providing that constant pressure. The rotations out from them was beautiful.